Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to 3 News Now. Today is Thursday, April 1st. Thanks for being here for the top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. I'm Stephanie Haney, and I really appreciate you being here. And yep, it is April 1st. It is opening day, and it is snowing here in Northeast Ohio. Now, of course, our crack weather team has been forecasting this, but uh, it's still kind of surprising to see. And it is opening day for Major League Baseball. The Tribe is taking on the Detroit Tigers in Detroit. We've got a live blog up on WKYC.com where you can check that out. Of course, leading off, Cy Young Award winner Shane Bieber, the starting pitcher for the Tribe, and the lefty starter for the Tigers, Matthew Boyd, at the middle of the fifth. The Tigers are up 3-0, and oh, so you can catch that live blog on WKYC.com. And yes... It is April Fool's Day. I don't know about you guys, but it seems like April Fool's Day gets a little bit more aggressive every single year. I saw jokes coming out yesterday, and I do think, I'm just going to say, I think it's cheating if you put an April Fool's joke out on March 31st. You cannot trust anyone on the internet most days. You can't trust anyone on the internet, especially today. So keep that in mind. But this is not a joke. You can order COVID-19 tests through DoorDash in Cleveland and 11 other cities. DoorDash is now delivering two different PCR tests through their virtual convenience store. Now, one of them is a nasal swab. The other one is a saliva test. And these tests are from The Vault Health and also Everly Well. They're not cheap, though. They're $119 and $109, respectively. They are both approved by the FDA for emergency use. So you can do that in the city of Cleveland if you need a COVID-19 test. Today, Governor Mike DeWine addressing the state of Ohio and saying today in his press conference that he wants to vaccinate every single college student in Ohio starting next week. And to do that, they'll be utilizing the Johnson and Johnson single dose vaccine. Now, the governor said not every college will be completed next week, but they will start and they're very excited to do this. And now is a good time to talk about that Johnson and Johnson vaccine, because there were reports about a mix up about a plant in Baltimore that is resulting in the delay of about 15 million Johnson and Johnson vaccinations. Here's what I want you to know at the very beginning of this. The New York Times has reported that this does not affect any Johnson and Johnson doses that are already out there in the U.S. and that states are counting on next week. Those are not impacted. Those were produced in the Netherlands at a facility that's been fully approved by federal regulators. Okay, so you can rest assured if you are getting a Johnson and Johnson vaccine soon that it is not a vaccine that has been compromised. But reportedly what has happened is allegedly employees mixed up ingredients at the Baltimore facility and effectively ruined 15 million doses of Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson, though, said that their quality control process identified one batch where the substance did not meet quality standards. It was a site that's not yet authorized but was getting a jump on production expecting to be authorized by the FDA and that those doses were never advanced to the filling and finishing stages at the manufacturing process. Johnson & Johnson also says that it does fully expect to be able to commit to its goals of delivering more than 100 million doses by the end of May to vaccinate people here in the U.S. All right, now let's talk about the latest COVID-19 numbers. These first come from Johns Hopkins University. Across the globe, there have now been 129,174,929 reported cases of COVID-19 and a total of 2,820,503 reported deaths. Here in the U.S., the numbers are 30,485,635 reported COVID cases and 552,604 reported COVID deaths. In the U.S., we have 4% of the global population, but we've got the most cases and the most deaths. We have 23.6% of the COVID cases. That's actually down a tenth of a percentage point from yesterday, and 19.6% of the COVID deaths. Here in Ohio, the numbers are up again, which is not something that we want to see. The Ohio Department of Health has reported 2,475 new reported COVID cases in the last day. That's just over 167 cases per 100,000 people. Now, the reason that number is important, again, is because Governor DeWine has told us that once that number reaches 50 cases per 100,000, that the state's existing health orders will all go away. That's every single one of them. Now, that number is updated every Thursday. 
We don't have any new data on deaths in the state of Ohio to share today. There have been 93 new hospitalizations reported in the last day. That number is down. There are 1,039 people currently hospitalized, though, with COVID-19 in Ohio, and that number is up. Right now, 261 of those people are being treated in an intensive care unit, and we've seen 12 new ICU admissions in the last day. Let's talk about vaccinations now. The number of people completing their vaccination in Ohio is now more than 2 million. That's more than 17% of our population and more than 40, 59, excuse me, thousand people in the last day completed COVID-19 vaccination. Almost 3.5 million have started the vaccination process. That's almost 30% of our population and more than 89,500 have gotten at least their first dose in the last day. Now, let's take a look at what's happening in Minneapolis on day four of the murder trial for Derek Chauvin. He is the former Minneapolis police officer who was accused of the killing of George Floyd. And what's happened today, most recently, is a Hennepin County paramedic, Derek Smith, testified. That was the first paramedic to assess George Floyd on the scene. And he said he believes that George Floyd was dead when he was underneath Derek Chauvin's knee when his when Derek Chauvin still had his knee on his neck when he was still being held down by the officers he said and I quote in lay terms I thought he was dead he said he told his partner I think he's dead and I want to move this out of here in a living person there should be a pulse there also today the first person with a personal relationship with George Floyd testified his girlfriend Courtney Ross she broke down on the stand describing how when she met George she was having a bad day and he asked if he could pray with her and that was the first time that they met and she did testify that the both of them had struggled with opioid addiction as a reminder Chauvin is charged with second degree murder second degree manslaughter and third degree murder in Floyd's death the judge did tell the jurors this morning that he will give them Friday afternoon off because testimony is moving more quickly than expected. We don't yet know at this time whether attorneys will still handle legal issues on the live stream on Friday afternoon. Here's a new update that's coming to Ohio that'll make things a little bit easier when it comes to renewing your driver's license. You'll be able to do it online for most people. This was included in a bill that was signed into law yesterday by Governor DeWine. It's the state's transportation budget. So people between the ages of 21 and 65 who have their current licenses or IDs that were issued in person and do have a photo on file with the state, plus a few other requirements, will be able to start renewing those online. That's supposed to start in July of 2022, so a little over a year away from that, but that is going to be very convenient. Okay, today is, yes, opening day for Major League Baseball. So one of our digital producers, Tyler Carey, he reached out to some of our friends here at 3 News and he put together some predictions, what people think, how the season is going to go. So I'm going to tell you a couple of them right now. Our Jay Crawford, one of the co-hosts of What's New, he thinks the Tribe will win 75 games. That was the lowest prediction out of the 162 games that they're expected to play this season. Betsy Kling, the other co-host of What's New, predicted the most wins she predicted 99 wins for the tribe i fell somewhere in the middle at 88 that's what i'm predicting i would have predicted more if we had hung on to lindor but we did not so that's where i come in on this he also asked us where the tribe will place in the american league central division and our sports reporter nick camino second place and tyler carey also predicting second place everybody else predicted third place with a couple people guessing that they might get a wild card spot when it comes to who the breakout player will be we had a couple of different responses here dave chadowski says emmanuel classe and our mike polk jr gave his take on it he says logan allen and here's what he has to say about this this is his message to logan allen he says congratulations beginning this season the indians have selected you to rapidly mold into their next temporary elite star ace via their transformational system this will eventually culminate in a Cy Young award followed by your inevitable abrupt departure to a team that does not have an annual payroll comparable to that of a lady footlocker outlet mall store enjoy your stay don't know that he's wrong there when it comes to who the team MVP will be, Ben Axelrod said Zach Plesak. That's our 3 News sports analyst. We've seen him many times here on 3 News now. And a lot of people said Shane Bieber. I also went with Shane Bieber. I said you got to keep him off the bases if you're planning on winning. And when it comes to how the Tribe's season will end, 
A lot of different takes on this. Ben Axelrod says, hopefully with a promising young core and a new name chosen, but no playoffs. Nick Camino says, the Indians and Terry Francona ride elite starting pitching to the MLB playoffs, then anything is possible. And our Sarah Shookman says, also, with the announcement of a new team name, maybe she's voting for the Guardians, and she says those faces are already a Cleveland icon. Very popular choice there with the Guardians. I guess we shall see. And with it being April Fool's Day, gotta end on a story of a savage April Fool's joke. This parent took a video of his two young sons after he told them that Baker Mayfield had been traded to the Steelers. The boys did not take it well. One of them said, are you serious? He was shouting in the background. And one in the front, he's got his face down in a bean bag kind of tearing up a little bit he said so dumb of them to pass him off to their rivals i agree that would be absolutely absurd well then they broke it to them they said Do you know what day it is april 1st it's april fool's day and the one in the front they asked him pretty good joke on he said no it was a bad joke that little buddy was really upset about it and you know baker mayfield saw the tweet himself and he said poor guys i feel their pain with some laughing crying emojis Good to know that he is not into that possibility there. It's not even a possibility. There's no chance of that happening. But in the spirit of April Fool's Day, had to share that with you. So uh, here's me telling you, just be kind with your April Fool's joke. Oh, that's a savage one. That's a dagger right to my heart. All right, that's it for your three news now update for Thursday. It's Thursday. April 1st. I'll see you next up on What's New with your trending stories in Clicking in Cleveland. Reminder, you can watch that on the WKYC app. You can also watch that on your Roku app and your Fire TV app. So check us out there if you haven't already. And I'll see you back here tomorrow for more 3 News Now. Between now and then, everyone, stay safe, be well, trust no one on the internet. I'm Stephanie Haney.